Welcome back. Venezuela has been described as a divided country with so-called Chavista supporters of President Nicolas Maduro on one side and anti-government movement supporters on the other side. Joining us now is the former U.S. ambassador to Venezuela, John Maester. Ambassador, thanks for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Uh, when we look at this crisis in Venezuela, there is now talk in the United States, especially in Congress, of imposing targeted sanctions on certain members of the government in Venezuela. Is that the best course of action for the United States? What really is going on here is um, the interest of Americans to try to contribute to resolve a Venezuelan problem when only the Venezuelans can resolve it. And the, the problem started with the Venezuelans. Uh, Venezuelans have been involved in some negotiations. They seem to have broken down. Uh, it would be best Senator Kerry, or excuse me, Secretary Kerry said uh, recently that uh, the United States wants those negotiations to take place, wants the government to level the playing field, because it's a very disproportionate struggle between the government um, uh, and the opposition. The opposition uh, wants uh, an end to human rights violations and uh, the basic uh, guarantees of a democratic society, the notion that members of Congress can get kicked out, the notion that political leaders can get exiled, and university students in the streets in, that, in, in, in a Latin American country, that's always been a recipe for disaster. And President Maduro's government is facing all of those things and missing opportunity after opportunity. And what you're seeing here is a, a reaction out of frustration. Right, when you say missing opportunity, what do you think should be done then? Very simple, sit down and talk to the opposition. It started a very good effort on the part of uh, Brazil, Colombia, um, and um, Ecuador with the Vatican. But then <laughs> opposition leaders are in jail. The government, the police are beating up on students in the streets and oppositionists in the streets, torture. Amnesty International describes what is going on in the country. This is a tragedy for Venezuela, and it's a tragedy for the government. The government could play this out on the negotiating table with support from the international community, but it is walking away from that opportunity. But shouldn't part of the solution be through the ballot box? You know, as uh, one of the opposition leaders, Enrique Capriles, has been saying, we need to go through the ballot box. We need to defeat the Maduro government in an election. Yes, of course. And I think a sizable number of the opposition wants to go in that direction. As a matter of fact, it was an election about a year ago. It was very, very close, which is another reason in a divided country why you cannot have the people who won using force and repression to impose their will on the people who lost. That's roughly half the population. So uh, with an expression of goodwill, level playing field or level negotiating table, uh, with the support of the international community that wants this issue to be resolved. Everybody does. The Europeans want it resolved. The Latin Americans want it resolved. The United States wants it resolved. Okay, you know, you, you did mention that there are some tentative steps towards resolving this around the negotiating table. Other countries are involved. The Vatican's involved. There's been uh, a very, very loud silence from other Latin American countries to what is going on in uh, Venezuela right now. We haven't heard anything from some of the big powers, from Brazil, other countries with uh, leftist governments, Uruguay, Chile, we haven't heard a thing. Uh, you're right, and that is very unfortunate. It's sad, because uh, it seems that the neighboring countries uh, don't want, they, they use the old, tired argument of intervention. No, you people have to resolve this yourself. Of course they have to resolve it themselves, but they need some help to get from here to there. And uh, and the Venezuelans need to hear from the Latin American community that the Latin Americans stand up for democracy and human rights. The problem in Venezuela is the, the current government, uh, in its desire to impose its will, is violating the Inter-American Democratic Charter, violating the basic norms of democratic governance, and it, it's involved in many terrible human rights violation accusations, which have, are proven. Everybody knows it. The media know it. Uh, Amnesty International knows it. Um, everybody knows it. But it is, it, it is hiding 
under the cloak of sovereignty and no intervention in our internal affairs. That's old, that's old think, that's old Latin America. That's not the new thinking in the region. Right, you know, one of our earlier guests was very pessimistic about a peaceful and quick resolution to this crisis. Um, do you see a way out? Uh, the only way out would have to be at the negotiating table. The only way out would have to be if both sides agree, and the government has to show goodwill first. The government has to let some of these political prisoners out. The government has to stop violating human rights in the streets. Uh, and, and, and they know it. The Venezuelans know it. The Latin Americans know it. And we certainly know it in other parts of the world. And certainly well known in Washington, D.C. That's why you're getting the reaction you're getting here. Ambassador John Meister, thanks for joining us, sir.